Hello everyone, Mike Whedon here from Formation. I was again joined this week by Mike Gilroy Scott, Head of Technology from Formation. And this uh, part of the series, we were talking about all things call recording and call reporting when considering Microsoft Teams as a direct routing or voice option as your phone system. We had a lot of feedback from customers, particularly in sectors such as legal and finance that um, we're used to or required um, call recording from a compliance perspective. So it could be if they were reading legal statements, taking card payments, for example, but they were used to this sort of functionality on their traditional PBX, wanting to move to Teams from all the flexibility perspective, but felt it was missing because they needed such recording to be able to pull back play recordings and remain compliant in their sectors. So Mike and I got together to talk about options from a call recording perspective, and equally, lots of uh, challenges that people have brought up is around the reporting suite from a Microsoft perspective as well. So traditional elements such as historical reporting for elements such as uh, average call talk, talk time, calls into the contact center or to the, to the business, missed calls, abandoned calls, being able to get those metrics on a daily, weekly, monthly basis to be able to report on, on user functionality, i.e. the balance sheet of your phone system. Um, so Mike and I talk things reporting and also cover off at the end the element of contact center. We're seeing a lot of noise in the industry around contact center at the moment coming into Microsoft Teams. We talk about the limitations, things to watch out for and the developments are coming. Really exciting times. So I hope you enjoy the video. So Mike, thank you very much for joining. So if we take the first topic of call recording. Some, some people might say, well, actually, I'll get a call recording with Teams. You know, I can go into the menu, I can hit manual, pause and resume um, recording. Talk what the limitations of that around, specifically when we're talking about voice. Uh, absolutely. So, so that built-in recording functionality, if it's enabled on your tenant, um, is really, really handy if you're just, you know, in a call with a colleague or in a, in, a, in a meeting and you want to record it for reference later. So you just literally hit the ellipsis, drop down to recording and just record away. And it's very simple and easy to do. The problem being is that when you add uh, calling plans or direct routing into Microsoft Teams, um, it doesn't cover the the recording of those voice calls. So um, if you wanted to record those voice calls, um, if you were in a voice call and you went to that same menu, you'd find that the call recording is not an option. So what you need is a, a solution to deliver the call recording um, for, for voice calls in that aspect. Okay, that's interesting. So you, you kind of get it with video and collaboration, but when you add the voice path, it doesn't happen. So. You, you were tasked probably six months ago trying to find a recording solution for Teams because we've been traditionally selling it. What, what did you find out there? What are the options? And, and can customers now, like we said, in say legal finance, really need that compliant recording? What, what are the options out there? Absolutely. I think probably we start at the beginning. You know, how do we record calls in Teams, especially if you're, you know, for example, you're bringing in direct routing in uh, to your sort of PSDN services into Teams. How do we do it? Um, mm. There's a there's a couple of ways you can do it. Um, actually, I think probably three. I won't go into too much detail on how they all work. Um, but the, the one that Microsoft uh, pushes uh, is the um, recording bot. Uh, effectively, this is an automated service that uh, Microsoft really controls, you just enable it within your tenant. And what that effectively does and calls that you would like to be recorded, the bot conferences into that call and that's what facilitates the recording of that call. Um, another way of doing it is if you're using direct routing, you've got an SBC in there to deliver your trunks is um, using something called SIPREC, which effectively does uh, an image of the, the voice um, session and then mm. sends that off to uh, uh, your recording platform of choice. And the last way um, is if you had, let's say, a contact center involved and you were sending calls from the SBC off to the contact center platform, um, you can record within the contact center platform. So there's probably three ways which you can potentially record uh, into Teams. Um, coming back to your point, um, we've, there are some compliance requirements. So they're not always uh, people are recording calls because it's for training purposes really it's yeah. very useful for that for that for that use um, but there are um, compliance you know they need the calls to be encrypted they need to be able to share them securely um, you know they need to uh, take payments but not record the actual 
um, digits of uh, credit cards, for example. So there are lots of things you need to be aware of and you need to make sure that you select the right recorder for your requirements. Yeah, okay. So, but I think it's rest assured that we've seen a lot of the more traditional recording companies as well as new ones. Um, they've, they've seen a massive gap in the market and really racing to get proper compliant recording. And I think that bleeds probably into where we're seeing the gaps in contact center, you know, traditional contact centers will always do recording, maybe back office functions a little bit lighter, but we're seeing that those worlds collide, aren't we almost? And average people using Teams now need recording. If you, you know, legal, you're taking uh, specifying specific comments or you're taking certain information, you really need to make sure those record recordings are there, backed up, compliant, safe, encrypted, etc. So lots of options we're seeing on that. And and the usual things that people ask, I can record on the user use and the user by you know, basis, I can do it from group perspective, all of that's still available, right? That's right. So you, you want to be able to have that flexibility. I mean, a lot of um, systems just include call recording as standard to become the de facto thing. You know, it's, it's accepted. It used to be very sort of fringe where you had a re compliance requirement, um, but now people just expect recording. Um, but they want to also want to have the flexibility. They don't want to record everything because they just don't think recordings need to be made. So, um, you know, a lot of these recorders that you can get with Microsoft Teams don't just record just the voice. You can record, you know, your one-to-one -one, uh, calls within Teams. You can record your meetings as well. And you can record the um, video-based screen sharing that's going on within that meeting. So these are all options that are all uh, uh, available to you. But also you might want to be a bit more granular with that. You may not want the VBSS. So you may not mm. want the group calls and, you know, the one-to-one -one private calls you may but you just want to have the ability to go you know what only interested in internal sorry incoming or outgoing calls on the PSDN so you know having a system that's uh, capable of filtering out that kind of recording and say you know what I only want that those types of recordings or I only want incoming calls recorded or mm -hmm. I want outgoing calls recorded or I want outgoing calls that have a specific tag in the meeting ID for example um, so we can do all of those sorts of things. Um, so having that flexibility just makes it, you know, taking taking it up a level from just I've got recording. It's like you need the control and the power to sort out what kind of recording you need. Good. Well, that, and, and, and you know, we, we equally get asked equally about things like QM and having that ability. So once the recorder's there, absolutely, we can see those. So it's so a great big tick in the box from that perspective. Um, you mentioned it just just briefly before we move on to the reporting piece. Pause and resume. So if I'm a customer that's ad hoc taking call recordings, um, but also taking card payments, and maybe I want the simple way to pause and resume, or maybe I want an automatic pause and resume for when I take those card pro processes, I can absolutely do that again within recorders within Teams. Is that fair? That That's right. I mean, the, the recording systems we work with, um, it's really important that you're able to sort of um, be compliant in terms of your not recording certain information. Um, so, you know, the first step is having something that the agent can manually pause and resume the call, you know, to, mm. to not capture that information. Um, then we also have systems which are URL based. So if you have a payment system that's at a particular web interface, can trigger the recorder to, to pause in, in, in that instance. Excellent. Okay, so traditional recording now in Teams, absolutely, it shouldn't be a blocker for, for bringing that on board. So, okay, good stuff. Um, next part, Mike, we want to talk about reporting. So some might yawn and go, oh, reporting is a boring thing, but lots of businesses still, specifically more when we're working from home, do need, if you've got sales teams, you've got specific departments that are making, receiving inbound calls, you need to know the metrics, how they're performing, albeit not full-blown contact center. What are the options on reporting? Again, it seemed to be a black hole, but actually Microsoft has done some great stuff and um, some good options out there, right? They do. So, you know, as standard in the Teams Admin Center, you can actually get um, some reporting, whether it's just, uh, you know, just your standard reports or even on a, on a user level. Um, where it kind of falls down is just allowing you to be a bit more uh, creative with your reporting. So as standard, it's it's pretty good. It's got all the information there. It's just you're kind of having to go in there and extract it and go, you know, but actually I want to see something different. Yeah. You know, that's where it, it becomes a little bit inflexible. So, you know, it exists. Microsoft has, to their credit, created some Power BI um, tools which can help you, you know, uh, get a slightly more um, 
you know, graphical way of reporting on your calls. Um, yep. So they've brought out and recently added the um, call queue and uh, auto attendant or response group reporting, so you can actually report on how well your your, your call handling is uh, within the business. Um, so that's kind of what Microsoft gives you, um, but there yep. are tools out there, um, you know, for those businesses that are, don't consider themselves a contact center but have performance metrics they have to run a service desk for example um mm. they want to see how their staff are performing they want to know you know how long you know the ring time is you know how quickly are people getting through them are they missing calls you know yeah, that's yeah. those kind of reports so yes we we have tools that tap into the graph api that microsoft provides that pulls down effectively the same information you get out of the teams admin center but uh, allows you to report on it in a way that those people who are used to using a traditional pbx uh, expect so we can still get those kind of uh, that kind of data where where it gets really exciting though is it's not just reporting on the calls mm. it's actually reporting on the medium of the call so you can go up from the PSTN calls to go okay how many one-to-one -one calls are people making how many meetings are people having so you can really you know get some really valuable business intelligence out of uh, what's going on on the the team's tenant okay so the information's there as you said customized reports okay you can do it in power bi um but the, the general like we see 90 percent of what everyone's wants average talk time missed calls abandoned calls all of that's available out of the box um and there are of course third parties that will give you that historical um data and, and real time what about real time reporting mike some people want more voice is that available so so at the moment there's no uh contact center api that's probably at the level that um uh, people, the well, contact center manufacturers would want. Uh, everyone mm -hmm. knows it's in the works. Microsoft, uh, it's bubbling away. Um, so yeah, yeah. there are certain things that are contact center like um, through the Graph API. A lot of this, uh, a lot of useful stuff can be pulled out, not just from the uh, CDR information, which gives you, you know, near real time information what's going on. You can pull down presence, so you could create a dashboard of presence of departments within your your business, yeah. allowing you to sort of see almost like contact center like dashboards but again there is a delay between that api delivering that information so it's not quite your contact center real time but you can with the reporting tools you can get a, a close experience yeah i read about it's more like querying it on a quite regular basis to pull back the information but i watch this space as we know the api and development from teams is microsoft is ever evolving so it's going to be a matter of time before that's achievable right um that right. brings me on to the on to the final point and you know we've seen the last couple of weeks particularly been some great announcements out from some um some big hitters in the industry people like eight by eight genesis from a contact sense perspective now being authorized as a contact center for microsoft teams however when you look under the the bonnet the biggest fundamental issue with contact centers in teams is is as you mentioned before, the presence, right? So the fundamentals of a contact center, a supervisor, for example, should be able to override an agent's presence, for example, and they just simply can't do that. So the, the, the ebbs and flows of a contact center, being able to bring agents in and out of group remotely, see what they're doing, making sure they're on breaks at the right time, adhering to their schedule, et cetera, that's still a sticking point, right? And what's your view, is, is Microsoft, continually working on this do you think it's far away because contact centers are edging to get in there but that seems to be the biggest limitations around the present yeah i think when microsoft conceived teams uh, i don't think that sort of contact center agent was considered probably as the number yeah, one yeah, priority you know so that you know a lot of the uc aspects of microsoft teams is pushing down to the user how they handle calls which mm. is kind of polar opposite of what you want to do from a contact center perspective where you want you know supervisor control over agents so you know i can understand why microsoft have this conundrum and it, it'll be mm. interesting to see what they come up with to resolve it no doubt they're in furious conversations with all those uh, contact center providers because a lot of businesses want to have their voice in teams there's a lot of benefits to it and uh, yeah i, I think it prob they'll probably come up with a solution uh we all hope it'll be license free uh, but watch this space <laughs> who knows um but yeah it should, it should be i think it is solvable um you know so we, we shall see how that pans out yeah teams for all for all things right and um i guess the other thing that i read about and is quite relevant is I guess the, the the nature of everyone living in video calls right now versus voice calls and it's again that balance if i'm a contact center agent do i want to be being invited to 
end-to-end -end video calls all day long when I'm actually trying to get on my job. So there's that balance of actually the human element of saying, when's a meeting? When am I supposed to be actually doing voice calls as part of the contact center function? So there's a lot of human discipline needed as well, right, to get that part of it. Yeah, who knows? It could be a bit like frontline worker, but rather than frontline worker, sort of agent worker or something, they come up with a new license and then certain features that are available or not available, depending on kind of your job role. So yeah. maybe that's one way they'll look at it. Well, watch this space. It's definitely an ever-evolving and a big, big topic at the moment from Microsoft from a voice perspective. Um, well, Mike, thank you. Um, as always, if anyone's watching and, you know, are thinking about direct routing, turning teams into your PBX, and you want to know about these extra reporting recording functions, we can absolutely help. That's uh, so what we set up to do. We've got that old old knowledge of the of the voice network, but also um, silver cloud specialists within the Teams environment as well. So any questions, please reach out. Thank you very much for your time as always, and watch out for the next videos in the series. Mike, thank you very much, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.